We are in an establishment of the Uruguayan Argentinian company Syntex. Pregnant mares are standing in alleys leading to restrained boxes. There their blood is taken once a week. A business worth millions operated for 30 years by a selected few. The production of the hormone pregnant mare serum gonadotropin short PMSG. Buyers of PMSG from Uruguay and Argentina are the pharmaceutical companies IDT Biologica in Germany and MSD Animal Health in Switzerland, Germany and Holland. PMSG is used to influence and increase pig reproduction. One method that has been used successfully over several decades to stimulate and synchronize estrus is the administration of a PMSG preparation to the sows concerned in order to start their cycle 24 hours after separation from the piglets. If properly treated, healthy hybrid sows, more than 95% of animals, can be expected to come into estrus within a few days. An advertising flyer of IDT Biologica states, PMSG harmonize your sows. Reproduction management with PMSG means easier working practices, increased reproduction performance, greater efficiency, trust in a 100% natural product. For the farmer this means a reduction of unproductive days, easier planning of working hours, all thanks to the natural product PMSG. MSD Animal Health defines its business philosophy as follows. Our goal is to win the trust of our customers day after day on the basis of our slogan, the science for healthier animals. The reality looks different. For the production of the blood serum, horses are systematically tortured, beaten, neglected and killed. We use a hidden camera to record five hours of the blood collection. During this time frame, the camera filmed about 30 minutes of thrashing and torture. Daily reality. With heavy wooden boards, the horses are hit over the head and in the face. With whip-like electric prods, they are beaten and prodded. A worker kicks a completely exhausted mare in the face with his foot after blood collection until she collapses and remains on the ground. Here a worker latches out in pure aggression. Even when exiting the blood drawing stall, the horses are mistreated. Mares which do not get pregnant anymore, but survived the years of blood extraction, are turned into profit one last time by selling them to one of the EU certified slaughterhouses. Their meat then ends up on European plates. Their fowls are usually never born. They die inside their mothers due to the repeated blood extraction or abortion. The Tierschutzbund Zürich and the Animal Welfare Foundation traced the blood business and investigated in Uruguay and Argentina. March 2015, we meet with two informants who have been investigating the blood business in Uruguay for six months. They show us the location where they discovered many bones and a dead mare last September. The pasture belongs to the nearby blood farm Don Ramon. There, the veterinarians Fernando Perdigon and Gabriel Maruri produced until recently blood serum for Europe. The death struggle of this mare must have lasted for hours, which is shown by the trenches made by legs, head and tail. She died from miscarriage. Several hundred mares were kept here by Perdigon and Maruri, well hidden in the eucalyptus forests. We drive to the former blood farm Don Ramon, where we meet Enrique Quintanz, the owner of the Estancia. He tells us that he had rented a stable with adjacent building to the veterinarians Fernando Perdigon and Gabriel Maruri for 14 years. It was a good business. He received 2,500 US dollars per month for the 100 square meters. 
I was obliged to secrecy and not allowed to enter the stable. You want to know what happened if he had seen the mares or fowls. There were always about 60 mares in the production at the same time. 300 to 400 mares were on the woodland pastures nearby. I hardly ever saw fowls. They were aborted or died as a result of the blood extraction. Mares that did not get pregnant anymore were brought to the slaughterhouse clay. Hmm. The blood collection took place at night when it was cooler and the risks of neighbors seeing something were smaller. After 14 years, the veterinarians had to close the blood farm because neighbors reported them to the police. They had discovered dying mares on the farm and in the forests. The land is owned by a European lumber company. They terminated the lease contract because they did not want to let their lumber business be soiled by the blood business. Enrique Quintanz tells us that Fernando Perdigon has moved to a more remote area, about 40 minutes away, where he continues to produce PMSG without disturbance. It is important to him to stress that the blood was always taken at night, probably because of the colder temperatures, but also to avoid being discovered. Enrique Quintanz is currently renovating the stable. During the first visit in September 2014, traces of the blood business could still be found all over. We want to obtain more information from the person who runs the blood farm, Fernando Perdigon. Why is blood taken from the horses? This is done to extract hormones, which normally flow in the blood of pregnant mares and which are used to improve livestock breeding. Who controls the business? The Ministry of Livestock, Agriculture and Fisheries is responsible for controls. How does the process of blood extraction work? This is a trade secret which I won't reveal. How about the different steps, roughly? The mares are impregnated, their blood is taken, from which we extract the plasma, and this plasma, deep frozen, is exported. And what is the secret? A lot of things. How long has this activity been going on in Uruguay? For 30 years. And how many mares are involved? Thousands, tens of thousands, ten thousands in the whole country, so I assume ten thousand mares. Are the mares' lives endangered during the process? Since birth we are all at risk to lose our life. Life has one problem and it's called death. And if an unborn foal dies, we all die. If you conduct this business systematically and know that the foals die in the process, does this not violate certain regulations of the ministry? I don't think so. The slaughterhouses also kill pregnant cows all the time. We drive to the new blood farm of Fernando Perdigon. On the way there, we find groups of mares in forest clearings. They are dull, abused, their bodies covered in scars from the beatings. Some have identification tags around their necks. Their tails are not trimmed, indicating that they are not yet in the production. Others are emaciated with pregnant bellies. Their blood has been drawn for quite some time. Like this white mare. Her tail is trimmed, she is thin and obviously pregnant. A large bruise surrounds the area where the blood is taken at the jugular vein. In front of the blood farm of Perdigon, we meet Enrique Riveron, Perdigon's foreman. He is not allowed to give us any information. We would have to talk directly with his boss. Nevertheless, he reveals that they currently have 200 mares on the farm. We continue to the Estancia La Paloma of PMSG producer Roberto Milos. His foreman does not introduce himself and he also does not have permission to give us any information. We want to know how many mares there are on the blood farm. He claims 80 to 90. Just along the access road to the Estancia, we have seen about 200. A worker tells us later that there are approximately 3,000 mares on a property of 1,300 hectares. 
We decide to meet with Roberto Milos and ask him directly. On the phone, he refuses to be interviewed for personal reasons. Roberto Milos? The reason that the blood business has gone undetected so far is, beside the obvious secrecy, the fact that horses, as well as farms, are well hidden in the vast countryside. We spend hours and days looking for the locations. We want to visit the blood farm Loma Azul, one of the farms of the probably largest blood producer, Syntex Uruguay. From customs documents, we know that Syntex Uruguay alone exports blood serum worth about $2 million to Europe every month. On the 25th and 28th of January 2015, there are two deliveries worth more than $2 million. In February, there are also two deliveries of PMSG worth about $2.4 million. And in April, Syntex exported PMSG serum for about $1.6 million altogether. The blood farm is secured like a military facility. We manage to pass the first barrier. At the second one, we have to stop. We are told to contact the manager. Manager Alejo Menchaca does not want to meet us either, even less provide information. From a worker we learn that they currently keep 3,600 mares at different locations on a total of 1,600 hectares, mostly in plantation forests. For the forest owners it is a good deal. The mares keep the underbrush low. For the blood farmers, it is an ideal hiding place, impossible to control. We want to ask a government official who is responsible for the control of the blood business and arrange a meeting with Dr. Mero Cabanas, president of the National Animal Welfare Committee. We would like to know how many companies are involved in the blood business, who is inspecting them, and where the blood serum is exported to. Dr. Cabanas confirms that the blood business has economic importance and that the blood serum is extracted for European pharmaceutical companies. He does not know who is making the profit. The inspections should be carried out by the Ministry of Livestock, Agriculture and Fisheries as the blood products are all exported. However, there is no legal basis for an inspection and the blood producers take advantage of this grey area with the law. Uruguay is of interest for the importing countries because there are no laws or official controls. We asked Dr. Cabanas, as a veterinarian, what consequences a frequent blood extraction could have for the mares. They gradually become anemic, suffer from stress, their immune system is weakened and the number of miscarriages increases. The blood extraction continues until the mares do not get pregnant anymore. They are then sent to the slaughterhouse. Dr. Cabanas puts us in contact with the Ministry of Livestock, Agriculture and Fisheries. We meet with Professor Dr. Ricardo Sienra, Director of the Technical Group for Animal Welfare, and Jorge Armstrong, Deputy Director of the Animal Industry Division. We repeat our question, but Professor Sienra also can tell us how many companies and farms are involved in the blood business. The blood serum is exported to Europe, to the EU, but he cannot name any countries. The inspection of this activity would be the responsibility of the Animal Health Division. However, there are no animal welfare laws relating to the production of PMSG. Uruguay would refer to international guidelines. We ask which international guidelines he is referring to. Professors Yenra and Dr. Armstrong point out the guidelines of the OIE and the European Authority for Consumer Protection, SANCO, which regularly carries out inspections. However, they explain that during these audits, the blood production was never an issue, only the meat production. We continue to ask questions and Dr. Sienra admits that he has no knowledge of national or international regulations he could apply. He asks us should we know any to pass them on to him. He assumes that the importing countries have chosen Uruguay to produce the blood serum because the animal welfare requirements in their own country would not allow this production.